Can a comic book work as a TV show back in 1989? Will people care week to week if the show doesn't have a continual story? I mean, sure, that's not what it said, but could the show work today? All this and more on Gory Storytime. Warning. Gory Storytime is a horror movie review show by a son and his dad who thought that letting his five-year-old watch scary movies was acceptable. If you are offended by horror or talk about blood and gore by a child, or if you don't want horror movies from the 60s through today spoiled, then there is a remote stuck in your couch cushion next to potato chip crumbs. Use it. And of course, parental discretion is advised. Why? You didn't use any. Shut up and start the show. Welcome to Gory Storytime. I'm your host, Jason. I'm his co-host and father, Craig, and wow, am I in a bad mood. Yes. Because my son is about as bright as a burnt-out bulb. But let me quickly answer those questions. Yep, and still does. Yes, and probably not. It would be shut down by the opposite group of those who shut down the comic book back in the 50s. Line those up. Okay. You know that the comics got shut down by a bunch of like Christian conservatives because it was violent and vulgar, and that's why they shut the comic book down and started the comic book code. Okay. Well, those are the people that would be fighting for the politically incorrect content to be allowed today, and it would be the left going, shut it down. They said he to the guy. It would be the opposite side fighting to shut it down now than shut down the originals. That's fact. Okay, yeah. Anyway, I usually don't explain the answers to the questions, but whatever. So this is our third week of doing horror TV shows, and he's been fighting this one because he's watched a bunch of these before, he's enjoyed them, and according to him, it's dumb. It's dumb because Every episode is unrelated to one another because yes. he can only watch. I mean, he also likes The Twilight Zone, and none of those have anything to do with each other either. And I wouldn't want to review that either. Well, that's because when sci-fi more so that well, wouldn't... and then when looking objectively at it as a se- as a season, I wouldn't feel the way I do. See, people nowadays don't understand that it used to be that they didn't have overarching stories in like half-hour shows, for the most part, until like the 90s and later, which I keep trying to explain to him, and he's like, but that's dumb. It's like, well, that's how TV worked from the 50s until the 90s. Right, and then more people were watching in the 90s and since, so who cares how it was working in the 50s? Like anyway, 12 people who so, owned TVs? Sure. That's why Twilight Zone lasted so many years, because 12, 12 people had TVs. Just stop. Stop talking. Uh-huh. I started to say Twilight and 12 at the same time. Like, 12? <laughs> yes. Anyway, so here's the premise of the story. There was a comic book that every one had, like, three horror stories in it. They wanted to put that on TV, so they gave an episode to each story, like, each story episode was one story from the comic book. That's the connection. They were all actual stories in a comic book. But apparently to him, that makes no sense. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't want to read that either. I mean, Marvel does those too. And I don't like those ones. Oh my gosh. What If is literally a series of one, ep- and you watched every episode of that. You- and it all connected. And they were all important to each other. I mean, they weren't even really quite as connected as you made it out to be when I sat through them all. And then that's not what we're here to review. <sighs> anyway, so we watched all six episodes of the first season because it was a short season. Yes. And like there's 
you know, a bunch of different topics that get covered. Usually murder is in there somewhere, but mm. outside of that, they're their own stories. And here's all you need to know for like Tales from the Dark Side was like that. Every episode was a different story. Like I never it's a common that. series thing. Like they, and Whatever. they Amazing Adventures was one that they had that was more like sci-fi and happy, and I think Spielberg was Never involved. Heard of that one. Well, just because you haven't heard of it doesn't mean it's not good. Anyway, so there's no real thing to explain. Did you come up with a trailer or anything? Okay, yeah, I, I sent him something. Okay, well, I wasn't sure because you know you don't usually do any research or anything for the behind the scenes for the work on this show. So it surprises me that you did that on your own because I forgot to tell you to do it. Let's roll the trailer and see what that shows us. Murder, madness, mayhem, and not just the fun part. Welcome to the crypt. You're in good company. Now here's a shocker from the man who gave you 48 hours. Revolting, but so current. Need a little holiday feel? Shall I scare up the man who framed Roger Rabbit? The killer is here! You asked for it. You got it. Oh. Screaming for more? I have this little number from Superman's Supermaster. They sought to kill you. Doctor! I wouldn't count on it. But you can count on my directors. Three Tales from the Crypt, June 10th on HBO. It's a night to dismember. <laughs> Warning, strong content. All right, well, I mean, that, considering they were unrelated stories, I mean, they did what they could. They were like, here's the character that's going to tell you the stories week to week. That's the wraparound, the Crypt Keeper. There you go. Happy? No, that's the continuity. Yes. yes. Okay. Let's continue with the show. Anyway, um, is there anything specific about this season to really talk about? No. Before we, not really. Um, before we get into the behind the scenes and stuff. So, what I will do is what we do every week and explain that we're not really here to review horror anyway. The actual reason that we're here is because big corporations love to pay us big piles of money to promote their products and we use this as an excuse to be on TV and do so. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so this week we got a Brinks truck to back up to our house to have us sell these real things that actually exist. And this week they are, let's see, <clears throat> Gory Story Time is brought to you by Sin, the game. Sin is a board game where you build wealth by committing the most sins, from prostitution to murder, from robbery to cheating on your spouse. Whatever you do, though, try to avoid the dreaded karma, in which case you will receive your comeuppance. Sin, the game, a hell of a good time. Mm. And? And by... Hactors, the coffee table game, a book of super famous actors who had been in horror movies before and sometimes after making it big. Hactors. Uh, Hactors has full color shots of these incredible thespians from the horror roots with descriptions of their characters and some behind the scenes trivia. We have Jennifer Aniston, Lor Lauren Lawrence Fishburne, Kevin Bacon, Johnny Depp, and many more. Hactors, buy your copy today. All right, now, I mean, that's actually a good idea for a book. Um, let's see, now to the behind the scenes information or meat and beef as he likes to call it because- Indeed. Yes, um, and because it's six unrelated episodes, the first couple will be about episode one, then episode two, <coughs> <coughs> Etc. Mm -hmm. um, and one of us will, like, when it switches to what episode we're talking about, it does say so in the fact I made sure. And then there's some, the last couple are just overall facts for the series. Do you want to go first or? Sure. In episode one, The Man Who Was Death, William Sadler 
uh, initially in auditioned for the role of the detective who arrests Niles Talbot. 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 But asked at his audition about auditioning to play Talbot. The casting director informed Sadler that they sought Christopher Walken or John Malkovich for the role. Nevertheless, Sadler was allowed to audition and was eventually cast. Unlike the majority of episodes, the Crypt Keeper does not announce the name of this episode. Huh. The first one was a mess up, I guess. Um, William Sadler had a role in the Green Mile, which, like this episode, is centered around the death penalty and the electric chair. In episode two, and all through the house, uh, it was a previously adapted segment that was in the 1972 film version of the comic, which we've actually watched and reviewed here. Uh, the radio announcer warns that uh, warns the Gaines County area of the escaped maniac in a Santa suit. This is a reference to William Gaines, uh, publisher of the comic books in the 50s. Also, when the police officer calls the wife, he says his name is Feldstein. A reference to Al Feldstein, one of Gaines's top EC Comics employees. A name that I recognize as a Mad Magazine fan growing up, too. Uh, this is the second time Larry Drake has played an escaped psych patient that goes on a killing spree. He also was Dr. Giggles. In Lethal Weapon 2, Roger Murtaugh, uh, Murtaugh's daughter, has her television debut on a TV commercial that airs during this, this episode. You can see the family watching it with the sound off as they wait for their daughter's ad. Which is funny because it was made for HBO and they didn't have commercials. So it's weird that they used, but mm, whatever. Probably the same movie company involved behind the scenes. Um, <clears throat> in episode three, Dig That Cat, He's Real Gone, director Richard Donner cameos as an audience member during Ulrich's burial death and can be seen chanting Ulrich, Ulrich, Ulrich with the crowd. His wife, Lauren Schuler Donner, producer of the X-Men franchise, was sitting beside him. Huh. Uh, the ringmaster tells Ulrich that HBO has sent their check. Uh, Tales from the Crypt was produced and aired by HBO. Joe Pantoliano plays Ulrich and has been in over 150 movies and TV shows, including The Goonies, The Bad Boy franchise, uh, or Bad Boys franchise, The Sopranos, and Baby's Day Out. Before he introduces only Sin Deep in the beginning of the episode, the Crypt Keeper recites the Mirror Mirror chant, which breaks a mirror and says that he just bought seven years of bad luck. The show lasted for about seven years. Well, seven seasons, it did. Um, according to Leah Thompson, she found it difficult to perform her love scenes with Brett Cullen because he is her close friend in real life. Her difficulty was compounded by the fact that her husband, Howard Deutsch, was directing her. She had to redub her dialogue in those scenes post-production. Mm. The title Lover Come Back to Me is based on Lover Come Back to Me by Sigmund... It was supposed to be Lover Come Hack to Me and it changed it again. Oh. I fixed it oh, three times. And okay. It the name of the episode was Lover Come Hack to Me. Okay. Lover Come Hack to Me is based on Lover Come Back to Me by Sigmund... Romberg, with lyrics by Oscar Hammerstein the second, and published in 1928. Amanda Plummer plays an axe murderess who kills her husbands. Ironically, she would later play an axe murderess who kills her brother-in-laws four years later in the 1993 comedy, So I Married an Axe Murderer. Huh. Uh, lover come hack to me. Oh, yeah, me, okay was playing on a TV in Odessa's drug lab in the movie Ricochet. In episode six, collection completed. Despite playing husband and wife and being of retirement age in the episode, Audra Lind Lindley was actually 18 years older than M. Emmett Walsh in real life. Uh, the introduction sequence that started every episode through the Crook Keeper's home was actually the size of a miniature golf course uh, green. Small snorkel cameras were used to film this portion. The descent into the crypt in the end of the introduction is computer generated. John Cassier came up with the trademark voice of Crypt Keeper when Cassier auditioned for the part. The producers loved it so much they almost immediately chose him. Uh, the series was originally envisioned as a trilogy story feature film. 
this was changed to a television program because the producers feared it would bomb as a movie, as trilogy-style horror movies rarely have success at the box office. Yeah, huh. that's why there's not a lot of good ones. Um, the show was originally only planned for three seasons, but it proved to be so popular it lasted seven. Series creator William M. Gaines only lived to see season three. The show was originally only... That repeated itself. That's weird. Okay. That was... But yeah, I remember the episode after he had passed away. It was like the first episode of the next season, and it was in his memory. I, I knew him more as the guy from Mad Magazine, but... There was Mad, there was Weird Science Tales, there was... There's oh, also Rotten of... Tomatoes. Ah, yes. Rotten Tomatoes, for those who haven't been following the show, uh, they don't rate the movies. What they do is they take other people's ratings, figure out if they're positive or negative, and then just give you a percentage <clears throat> of the total number that are positive. So if 20 people say it's positive and five say it's not, then it's going to have a high rating. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and then they also have a number for the people. What do the critics have? The critics have it at 80%. And that says 92 for the people? Yeah, it makes more sense because, again, horror gets higher rated from yeah, fans. It does. And um, weirdly, I think this one should be more of an episode to episode basis only because they're not related. Like, again, would it be fair to rate the entire season if, like, if there's yeah. three bad episodes but four really good ones in a season, then why rate it based on the because whole season? it's what they put out for that season. Nah. It's that simple. It's weird to me that he loves anthology movies and doesn't like anthology series, even though they're literally the thing he likes. He's like, oh, there's a wraparound story. There is in this too. It starts with the Crypt Keeper. He tells you the story. It ends with the Crypt Keeper. It's literally the premise of Creep Show and Creep Show 2 and Creep Show because it, it was based on these comics. Without, I mean, the stories weren't, but basically Stephen King wanted to do his version of Tales from the Crypt. And the comics code was still in effect in the 80s, so couldn't do it. Whatever. It was a way for Marvel and DC to basically push the small guy out of the way. Because, and then they then started they still breaking that the stuff rules. anyway. Yeah, they started putting in vampires and ghouls and stuff, even though that was against the code. And they're like, ah, but we're doing it in a way that's appropriate for the code. It's like, I, I like me some DC and some Marvel, but let's not pretend that they weren't both the evil empire at that point. And they were just DC being was this mean. little the little guy, and they're like, ah, but they're doing something popular that we're not making money off of, so it's bad. Basically. I, I hate the theory that no matter what thing exists, if kids like it and it's violent, it causes violence. It's like these comics cause violence. TV shows cause violence. Movies cause violence. Books cause violence. Music causes I mean, violence. If comics video and games video games, games cause caused violence. Why aren't more like older fat white men out there shooting people up? Well, let's be honest. I read the Stephen King books and stuff growing up. Yeah. I watched Tales from the Crypt. I mean, it was 1989. I was 11. You were, like, almost the perfect age. Like, I, I mean, I wasn't supposed to be watching it. But you but were, my like, mom didn't you care were like, the target I, audience. I was watching Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street and Chucky and all that stuff at this point. Like, if it existed and it was horror, I, you know, I played the games. I had a Nightmare on Elm Street board game, for Pete's sake. I played the See, Jason Voorhees video game. that make me kill somebody. Game. It was awful, by the way. The video game? Yeah, I know. I'm talking about the... the no, I'm talking about the Freddy board game. It was not oh, good. that Jason game, I know which one you're talking about because it was ripped on a website I played. And yeah, it's frustrating. It's, just, it's very frustrating. You open any door and there he is like and you're ran, dead and you can't win. Basically. Um, they definitely did a lot better with the one from a few years ago that yeah. on the PS4. Uh, but anywho... Um, I listened to the music. I still do listen to the music. And I've murdered almost zero people. Right, right. As far as everybody knows. No, I've, I've literally murdered zero people. Um, I've actually never attempted to. So you would think, you know, 
someone that listens to all the music and plays all the violent games and reads watches all, the all those violent TV, the TV shows, shows and, movies. and the movies. I've written horrific stories. He's you've seen horrific things. I, I've experienced horrific things. Exactly. And I've never thought, you know, I want to put this on other people. It's just never happened. No, see, I've thought that. What it is is crazy people love scapegoats. It's not my fault I went crazy and killed people. It's Jason Voorhees' fault because that uh, my birthday with was the blue Friday eyes. the 13th. It's like, shut up. Ted Bundy. I uh, saw an interview where he was like, yeah, it was the books. Yeah. I, it was the books and the movies that it, made me do it. And every time they do real research with real scientific like thoroughness to it, like it never causes it. It doesn't hold up. But anyway, all right. What was your favorite of the six stories? Do you remember what the six were? There was the guy, uh, the man who was deaf. Yeah. Uh, the second one was the Santa Claus crazy guy. Yep. Yep. The third one was Joey Pants. Yeah, dying and coming back with yep. nine lives. All right. Um, the fourth one Leah was Thompson. only Cindy, the yep. lady fa- selling her face or whatever to that creepy yep. guy. Um, Sold her looks. At a, uh, I'm blanking on the fifth one. What do you call those? Pawn shop. Yeah. Uh, The fifth one. Lover come hack to me. It was the one where the woman killed her husband on their wedding night and said, as he's she's killing him, she's like, I'm pregnant and it's this big. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. And then the last one was the crazy woman and the husband retired. Yeah. She had like like 700 cats. She was treating him like a pet. Yeah. And dogs and, he, and, and he birds. Just snapped. And it wasn't just cats. She was a crazy animal person. It wasn't and specific. he just snapped because he couldn't deal with it. He's like, I'm stuck at home, and you're feeding my good steak to a mutt. And gave me a tuna sandwich made from cat food. Like, really? Right. I mean, she had to go. Like, yeah. <laughs> Except he didn't kill her. But I won't give it away if you haven't seen it. So what was your favorite, favorite of those stories? Now, try to remember, because some of them you had seen before, some you hadn't. So, like, don't let having seen it multiple times sway you. It's, like, the story itself, which one do you think was best? I honestly think, I'm trying to remember, episode three, yeah, um, with Joey Pants as the cat guy. Okay. Uh, might be my favorite The revelation one of, the of, oh, no. <laughs> because, like, even though I'd seen that one probably a handful of times, it still, like, it still Work. holds up for me. Okay. Like, that would make a good movie. Okay. And it's a half-hour show from what I can only assume was, like, a three- or four-page comic. I Right. I'm going to go ahead and say mine was probably Collection Completed because it was the over-the-top humor and gross. It, it had, like, the gross gore with the over-the-top humor, and that's what Tales from the Crypt embodies. Yeah. Like, that's why people watched week to week. Even though the stories were going to be unrelated to each other, they were going to hear the Crypt Keeper. He's going to make a bunch of bad puns, like See, horrible puns. You know, good evening, boys and ghouls. Like, every time, it's like, okay, dude. Except like, for the first time. It. Right, I know. And I said, I called it out. I'm like, really? He didn't go with ghouls? Boys and girls? And what then is he, this? Like, every other episode, it was boys and ghouls. Yeah. Every other one. Um, but the point is, like, that level of corny with that level of gory is the point of those comics. They were really over is. the top. It really is. They And they weren't meant for children. And the uh-huh. show was rated... It was before TV. I mean, yeah, MA. this show has all the F words and those. the blood, and it's got the sex, and it's, it's got, got the nudity. nudity. And, yeah. It's got everything you're looking for. And I was watching it at 11 because kid. my parents were good to me. But <laughs> at the same time, it legitimately feels like it was also you were the target audience at 11 years old. Probably. Because but this, who's reading comics in the 80s? The amount of celebrities involved. You know, Richard right. Donner, who did Superman and worked with, uh, um, like, there was... There was a name in there, I think, because that trailer, I think, mentioned, like, the Princess Bride. Like, yeah, I mean, th- like, they had producers, writers, directors, and it only got bigger and bigger. Like, they had... Like, the by former... season four, they had Meatloaf and Christopher Reeve. In the same episode, of all things. Right. Right, what? absolutely. So what Directed was... by Richard Donner. <laughs> what was your least favorite episode? I'm going to go with... Only Sin Deep, probably. 
Yeah. Yeah. Why? Um, I don't know. Like it just the whole time I'm looking at her and she's supposed to be like getting older or whatever was going on, and it, I just didn't believe it. Okay. Like okay. I know I didn't believe that the dude died seven times, but like I believed that more than her face getting wrinkled at like eighteen. Okay. Um, I would say probably uh, the man who was death. Would, or no, you know, I'm gonna go with the Christmas one. The uh, uh, what was it? Uh, I can't remember. And all through the house. All through the house. Um, yeah. Not because I didn't like the story. But because in the Tales from the Crypt movie from 1972, which was an anthology movie, movie they had that. They yes. did that story. Like, I'd seen it. And it's like, okay, but how about pick ones that weren't oh. in that film? Right. They had, like, years of those comics. Because it wasn't just Tales from the Crypt. It was the Vault of Horror, it was the Witch's Haunt, which were three that were all related, and they would intermingle characters. There were like three characters that were all related and they only used the Crypt Keeper, but there was the Old Witch and the Vault Keeper too. Those, huh. those were the three horror storytelling characters. In the comics. They did do a Vault of Horror movie, which we tried to watch and I don't think we reviewed. Yeah, I'm not even recognizing that. So. It was because Tales from the Crypt did okay. But that's the only reason is because they've kind of done it already. Right. I didn't realize it was Dr. Giggles in the makeup. I thought that was kind of cool when I read that. Yeah, I definitely didn't recognize that Well, guy. you haven't seen Dr. Giggles. Uh, I thought you showed my own. No, I showed you the dentist. Oh. And you keep confusing those. But I'm talking about a doctor that he like, literally gets the giggles while he murders you. Oh, I thought it was like a laughing gas thing from being a dentist. No, no, no. Okay. That, that's why it's doctor giggles, not... I mean, dentists are doctors, fool. Okay, but it's not giggles DDS. Okay. <laughs> anyway, that's the kind of doctor a dentist is, DDS. Anyway. Whatever. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you say for this season? I mean, it's a short season. I'm going to go... Like Walking Dead was. Another comic book. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. I'm going to go eight, um, only because, yeah, it gets better. But, like, they definitely had a decent start to show people what the show was. It's humor. It's gore. <clears throat> it's over-the-top violence. And it's getting your comeuppance. I mean, every, the majority of the stories are someone does something screwed up. And then, and then something happens at the end to take it, you know. And sometimes bad people end up winning because a good person did something screwed up and come up with had to happen. <coughs> I mean, that's that Christopher Reeve episode. Yeah, like they weren't good people. But the, I mean, literally in that one, the bad thing that Meatloaf did was want his rent. No, that's what no. I'm saying. Right, so he was... they, he seemed kind of like the bad guy in real life. Like he's the kind of person that's just like a bad dude. And they, good people, but did a horrible bad, thing. But there was the employee. We'll not talk about yeah. season four. I don't know why we're doing Is that, that. Season four. I think it was. Wow. Um, but anyway, uh, all right. Anything else you want to say about this show before we move along? Because we got one more series to work on for next week, and then. Yeah, no, I'm not thinking of anything else to say. All right. All right. So over there. You can watch this show on Fact TV Channel 1076, Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. and Fridays at 7 p.m. You can like us on Facebook. And when I say us, I mean like Gory Storytime, which has been getting a lot of likes lately, actually. We're up to over 250 people that like the page and follow the page. Which is cool. Yeah. It's considering in the last month, like 100 or so have been added. That's Great. Yeah. Um, and it's been like every day, like three or four times, it's like, hey, we got more people liking it. Um, and I appreciate that. But you can also like Fact TV too and watch the live streams and they do a lot of stuff. Next. Indeed. Uh, you can go to factaid.com and watch a bunch of the back episodes of this and including other shows and other entertainment that they uh, helm. You can follow us on uh Twitter, I'm at Craig Jakes, all one word, all lowercase. I'll probably be mostly complaining about Amazon. Yeah, and I'm at Jiggly Firm Brain. 
Um, I don't tweet anything about the show, but I might be tweeting something about Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> he literally just quotes me, and if it's funny, he whether in or out of context, whatever's funnier, he tweets that. Um, and check out my YouTube channel, Juggalo Jakes. It's, uh, you can go to that and, uh, or just look for Gory Storytime and you'll find me and you'll find Fact TV's channel. Um, give them both a like and a subscribe. That's awesome. Indeed. You know, watch the show. Yes. Um, so until next week with a show that probably has continuity. Most likely. Um, I've been your host, Jason. I'm his co-host and father, Craig, and Sweet Dreams. Sweet Dreams. What was that?